True Stories of Parallel Universe Number 1. The Man from Tered Often considered to be the most well-documented instance of an interdimensional traveler. The Man from Tered was one of the most recent appearances on this list. In 1954, Japan's Haneda Airport was checking passports of passengers, just as they usually would. One passport was a bit different, and it belonged to a well-dressed businessman who spoke fluent French and Japanese. The alarming difference that made security officials pull the man aside was the fact that he somehow seemed out of place. They began to question him, assuming that he was a trafficker. The man was confused by this. He said that he was from Tered, and that it was a country situated between France and Spain. Customs didn't believe him and he didn't believe customs when they said that Tered didn't exist. Annoyed, he showed them his passport, which was from Tered. The man, who was increasingly distraught, was desperately trying to prove that he was correct. The passport had a number of official stamps from other countries, all of which appeared to be legitimate. The passport itself didn't seem fraudulent, either. However, it was from a country that never existed. Customs officials took him to a local hotel to spend the night while they investigated the matter. The hotel room was guarded so he wouldn't escape, if he was a trafficker. He agreed, and entered the room. That was the last that anyone ever saw of the man from Tered, or of his passports. Both he and all of his personal effects disappeared that night. Despite many of them being miles away in airport security's hands. Number 2. Jofar Voren. In 1851 in Frankfurt and Der Oder, a very confused man was wandering about town. He seemed to not know where he was, and when German officials decided to ask him where he was from. He said, in very broken German, that he was from Laxaria. No one had heard of this country, so they asked what continent it was on. He replied Sacria, which baffled authorities even more. Officials continued to ask about the strange land. The man, who was identified as Jofar Voren, did not understand any European languages officials spoke to him, with a small exception for extremely broken English. Neither Laxaria nor Sacria are known to exist. He continued to say that he spoke and wrote Laxarian and Abramian languages. With Laxarian being a language spoken only by clerics, and a Brahmin being the more common language. He also insisted that he was Christian, more specifically, a Patian. No one has heard of this form of Christianity. He claimed that he was in Germany to find a long-lost relative, and that he was shipwrecked. He couldn't trace his itinerary on any map that was given to him, but insisted that Laxarians knew about all five compartments of Earth. He called the compartments, which may be continents. Sacria. A slur. A slur. A slur. And Euplur. In our known histories the Scythians. A people who appeared in a broad region north of the Black and Caspian Sea sometime around 2,500 years ago, were also known as Saka, or Saka. The word Saxon may originate from this. These people were fierce warriors and metalsmiths of great skill. It was these same people who were to later move en masse to Central and Northern Europe. Speaking a form of the Indo-European language related to modern-day German and other Germanic languages, like English. Whilst some speculate that here may be proof of parallel universes. The existence of multiple timelines is also an interesting concept and is of course related. Is it possible that these timelines occasionally cross over or meet? allowing some to intentionally or accidentally pass through? If you will allow me the indulgence of speculation. Perhaps Jofar's own timeline diverged from the one we are currently on around 2,500 years ago. Maybe his country of Laxaria developed from the Saka, or Saka and followed a divergent course to our own, yet retained a few similarities in language and custom. Soon after he was interrogated, the confused and scared man disappeared, never to be heard from again. Before going on, if you like these stories, do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell, so you will not miss new stories like this. 
Number 3. The Green Children of Woolpit. The Green Children of Woolpit are two of history's most enigmatic visitors. As well as the oldest tale of interdimensional travel known. Dating back to the 12th century, the story says that two children were discovered on the outskirts of Woolpit, Great Britain. Unlike most children, these kids had one feature that really stood out with their green skin. As soon as farmers found them, they begin to cry in panic. The children were taken back into Woolpit and given food and drink. At first, they refused to eat. One child, a boy, refused to eat and starved to death. The other, a girl, began to eat uncooked beans. Slowly but surely, her skin began to return to a normal color. She wasn't able to speak the language, so it took a while to learn. The children also slowly learned to speak English, and once fluent were asked where they had come from and why their skin was once green. They replied with, We are inhabitants of the land of St. Martin, who is regarded with peculiar veneration in the country which gave us birth. We are ignorant of how we arrived here, we only remember this, that on a certain day, when we were feeding our father's flocks in the fields, we heard a great sound, such as we are now accustomed to hear at St. Edmund's. When the bells are chiming, and whilst listening to the sound in admiration, we became on a sudden, as it were, entranced, and found ourselves among you in the fields where you were reaping. The sun does not rise upon our countrymen. Our land is little cheered by its beams, we are contented with that twilight, which, among you, precedes the sunrise, or follows the sunset. Moreover, a certain luminous country is seen, not far distant from ours, and divided from it by a very considerable river. In short, the green girl claimed that she and her brother came from a place called St. Martin's Land, which was always in a state of darkness. Everyone there lived underground and had green skin. She also said that across a river was another luminous civilization. She said that they had come upon a cave, and decided to explore. They ended up walking until they found Woolpit. When they looked back, the cave had disappeared. Most people who believe in the story agree that these two kids came from an alternate universe or dimension. What else could it be? Number 4. The Disappearance of William Contello Most of the disappearances and appearances on this list seem to be done spontaneously. But if historical records are correct, at least one instance of interdimensional travel was done on purpose. An eccentric inventor by the name of William Contello was working on his newest invention which is a rapid-firing machine gun. Contello had told his sons that he was going to go to the market to sell it, and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. A private investigator suggested that Contello could have gone to America, but that too, was difficult to prove. The mystery gets a bit stranger after about 20 years, when an American man by the name of Hiram Maxim invented a rapid-firing machine gun by the name of the Maxim gun. Maxim bore an uncanny resemblance to the missing inventor, so much so that Contello's sons actually mistook Maxim for their father. To make things even more bizarre, Hiram Maxim claimed in his autobiography that there was a man who was impersonating him. This suggests that Maxim might have been dealing with the flack from being mistaken for Contello for quite some time. Could it be that Hiram Maxim was the alternate history version of William Contello? Many have suggested this to be the case. Number 5. Caspar Hauser. The story of Caspar Hauser has been pegged as a number of things. Some believe that it was the work of a man who wanted to pull a long con on high society. Others believe that Caspar Hauser was the victim of bad abuse. Still more believe that he's a traveler from another dimension. All that we know for sure was that he was a mysterious man who had appeared from nowhere. In 1928, a young man with a limp was seen walking through the streets of Nuremberg. He called himself Caspar Hauser, could barely speak, and had an envelope that was addressed to the captain of the Nuremberg Calvary in his hand. Upon seeing the envelope, authorities brought him to the guard house, fed him, and offered him beer. Things started to get stranger when he began to behave like he never drank beer or ate food before. 
Kasper Hauser didn't know much about the outside world, and it seemed like he wasn't used to wearing shoes. After some tutoring in German, he began to discuss his prior life. He mentions that he was locked in a room, given scraps for food, and having a single toy horse for company. He never saw his jailer, nor did he know who his father was. He was sensitive to foods, colors, and even magnets. It was as if the world was completely new to him. Eventually, he became adopted by a socialite of Nuremberg and soon became part of high society. The attention, particularly after he wrote his autobiography, proved to be his undoing. In his short time in the public eye, he was one of the most famous people in Europe. Some believed he was an imposter who had been kicked out of a peasant home. Others speculated he was the Prince of Baden, stolen as an infant and replaced with a dying baby. The possibility of scandalous royal blood was reinforced by an apparent assassination attempt, where Caspar was found with a knife gash in his head at the bottom of a staircase. He claimed he had been attacked by the same man who had left him in Nuremberg. Five years after he appeared, he was fatally stabbed in the palace gardens in Ansbach. It is still unclear whether the wound was self-inflicted or if in fact that he was murdered. On his tombstone was carved, Here lies Caspar Hauser, the riddle of his time. His birth was unknown, his death mysterious. In the spot where he was stabbed in the court garden, a monument reads in Latin, here a mysterious man was killed in a mysterious way. Traces of Caspar Hauser remain all over Ansbach. Including at the Markgrafen Museum in Caspar Hauser Plots, a square named for Caspar, where the bloodstained clothes he was found in, the two letters, and some of his personal belongings are exhibited. In 1981, Caspar Hauser Denkwall aka, Caspar Hauser Monument, was erected. With two statues in Plattenstrasse, one of Caspar as he appeared in 1828, stooped over, legs bent oddly, the letter grasped in his hand. The other shows Caspar as a refined young gentleman, much as he would have looked when he died from the knife wound in 1833. Despite DNA tests and numerous books and studies, Caspar Hauser's real origins remain an enigma, and it is probable that no definitive conclusion will ever be made on his strange life. Where did this man come from? Was it even our world? Hope you like these stories on Parallel Universe. Please leave a like for the video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below, so you will not miss any new videos like this. Thank you.